Good up for all guys, I know we have a premium review on the Tandem Mai. Now, to start off with, I normally talk about the price and or if you can get this vehicle at all. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get this vehicle anymore. This is because this vehicle was released back in 2018 with the Chronicles of World War II event. And this was during a time when I was in college and I bet you're wondering, how did I get this thing then? For those that are new to the channel and didn't see the community post, I actually got this vehicle out of the demolition crates. I was very fortunate to do so, and it was definitely quite interesting to say the least. But of course, with it being unable to be accessed, I'm purely going to talk about it as if you could potentially get this thing in the future, but I don't think this vehicle is going to be coming back anytime soon. So without further ado, before I begin with covering the vehicle, you may skip to the gameplay with the description link down below. That's, of course, if you choose to do so and you just want to see how the aircraft flies and all that. Anyway, let's get in and let's talk about the aircraft, its weapons, its performance and the flaws of the aircraft because there are a few. So, let's take a look at the engine first. It's the Tomansky M87 14-cylinder radio with an 830 horsepower output in terms of normal power and on WEP it produces 962 horsepower. This is okay for around 1.7 to 2.0, but you definitely feel it because this thing is a bit weighty in the back. And that's mainly due to the fuel tanks and of course all the wing spars and then of course Ivan, who's gotten a bit chunky as you can tell. Ivan's not exactly, he's not exactly been hitting the gym recently, so he's a bit chunky back here. But the engine power is definitely one of the things that lets this vehicle down and it can affect it. One other thing as well is if you choose to carry external weapons, the bomb bay is located right near the back here, so it adds even more weight to the back, so it can feel a bit unbalanced sometimes, but if you get used to it, you'll know what this aircraft can and can't do. In terms of guns, we have four 7.62 Shakas machine guns, and it's not bad, 600 rounds per gun, pretty high fire rate, and they hit decently well, and... Yeah, nothing really to say about it. The rear gunner, of course, Ivan back here, he does have access to a single 7.62 Shakas machine gun with 700 rounds. He has pretty good horizontal coverage, with it being able to cover most areas across the tail, cover most vertical areas quite easily, and can even help out against attacking ground targets if you're out of bullets, as you'll see. We don't really use the rear gunner against enemy aircraft, we only really use it against bots, but... It's something, and this gunner does have great coverage for just all-round purpose. Of course, the bombs, because, well, this thing can carry a couple, we only have access to two bomb load choices, which are two Fab 50s and two Fab 100s. The Fab 50s are what you're going to see first in the gameplay, and then you'll see the Fab 100s. Personally, if you're just going to be doing farming in, like, ARB or something, you're going to want to take the 50s. This thing does compress quite badly, at higher speeds of around 280 to 300 miles per hour and adding the two two or the two 100s when it's already compressing quite badly can affect it sometimes though it's best to just not bring any bombs at all the guns can take out most light targets that you're going to meet it can take out pillboxes but of course tanks is not an option that's where the bombs would have to come in but overall, the weaponry isn't too bad. I mean, you obviously can load Omnipurpose in the Offensive 7.62. The Universal Belt for the Turret is also really good. And just overall, it's not too bad. But of course, with it being a bit awkward in its weight, shall we say, distribution, and it just doesn't fly that particularly well. Like, it, it, it can be a bit unwieldy for, if you're not used to it. It does make this thing fall behind in terms of the competition that it would have in terms of other strike aircraft, such as Su-2s, Yak-2, PE-3 Peshka, and of course the IL-2, the first one. You can run into the second IL-2 if you have it on your team, but it's unlikely. 3.0 matches don't tend to happen too much with this aircraft, but when they do, because this match is a 3.0 that you're going to see, it can be a little bit finicky, and you're going to have to play it smart and just go for the things that you know you can kill such as bombers that are at low altitude, low altitude aircraft in general, and of course bots can be an easy to target to go for if you wish. And it's not bad for ourselves. As you'll see here, I mean, it's a rank 1 premium, and obviously there is a accident here. You'll see this in the gameplay. It was a pure accident. 
It's not, of course, going to be the best in terms of grinding SL with its low SL gain, but for a bit of fun, it can definitely be something that you can take out. Anyway, I'll hand you into the gameplay now so you can see exactly what happened without accident. It was quite unfortunate that it happened, but of course, me being me, I did apologise as I usually do. And, well, let's see how the Tanamai does in the match. Of course, I know, but you guys won't. And you'll also see what I mean about the compression. Anywho, I'll leave you all to it for today, and I'll see you all on the next one. Oh, looky what I found here. It's a German Wellington. This will be a nice juicy snack to start off the match. Well, depends on if he jumps on his gunners and lasers my engine, but we'll gloss over that. Alright, come on then, son. There we go. Rudder was feeling a bit stiff there, but, well, this thing's rudder does get a bit stiff after three, well, about 250 miles an hour. It does tend to get a bit stiff. You shouldn't really be playing this thing like this. Like, it, it can do it, but it's not going to be exactly meta-defining. Like, it's... It's more of a plane you take out for a bit of fun, if you've got it. I'm very surprised I actually got this thing in the in the demolition crates or whichever one it was. I can't remember which one it was. But honestly, very surprised I got it. And it looks like we have a mixed battle because that is a Yak 2. I didn't look at the start of the match, I'll be brutally honest, I just didn't pay attention. But yeah, we're in a mixed game, this ought to be interesting, but well, I kinda need need to deal with this Yak 2. I think he's going for ground targets. Or is he no he's base bombing. I won't be able to catch it, but I should be able to put some shots in his way. Yeah, I got some hits. P400 is joining the party. Now, I'm never going to catch a Yak 2, because I just don't have the... One, the engine power, and two, I just don't have the performance. Well, he's managed to do that, but the P400 is spraying quite badly. I mean, it's a cheap and easy way to get the Act 2 respaded, I guess, but, you know, it's not what I would do. I managed to take the Act 2 and got 7 kills. Like, it's very consistent. Like, it's, it's a very good plane, but base bombing in it is not what I would do. But that's my opinion, anyway. People can have opinions and all that, but I wouldn't do that if I was in a Act 2. Okay, so we've got... Let me press the V key there, that's fat fingers for you. So, AG100, got a Stuka with possible gun pods? It's been damaged, but... Well, it's a Stuka, they tend to be a bit more durable than that. It might be a D3 Stuka, which we still need to consider, because obviously this is a dangerous aircraft, with its back gunner. I don't think he's going to make it to the base, the entire team- Oh! That's a mid-air collision, and- What? What? Okay, I got a TK for that. I mean, yeah, I might have clipped him with a bullet, but... Okay... He's going to drop his bombs now, so I'm going to quickly turn out of the way. I have no idea why that happened, to be really honest, but, well... Accidents happen. There we go. Nice and easy. I'm a bit confused about that TK penalty, but to be fair, this thing makes enough money back. But apologies to that player. What was his name? Uh, where is it? Uh, Oxlong115. Apologies about that, but well. Gaijin just didn't like me today, it seems. I wasn't aiming for him. I think I must have nicked him with a bullet when engaging the Yak-2. Which, that does happen, because players do tend to fly in front of each other's guns these days. But, it's... It's not the worst. Alright, let's quickly bag this bot on the way through. Well, I'll try to, if my aim was actually decent. There we go. 
We're only left with 22 bullets, but that's okay. We can go and get these bombs out now. Oh, it's another bot. Hold on a minute. Go on, do me a favour. And, uh, you know, do your job. There we go. See, this this thing's rear turret is really good. Like, I'm... Like, it, it's just very consistent. And, like, yeah, it's obviously not going to be the highest damage output, but it's got great coverage. I mean, I'll just show you, like, the angles and stuff. You've got great coverage. Most of the way across the tail, like, it, it's well suited for this. So there's only one guy left, which is that MiG-3 up there, who's bomber zombing right now. So let's see if we can kill a grand target with our last 22 bullets. Probably not. Nope. But, that's why we brought a couple of bombs. But yeah, the, the bombs aren't obviously going to be the best, because, well, you can either take two 50s or two 100s. I took the 250s because this thing already compresses quite badly at higher speeds. I don't appreciate the extra 100 kilos on top of well, extra couple of 100 kilos on top of it. I'd rather just take the 250s for anything that I need. 50 kilogram bombs are more enough to do with light targets, so that's easy enough. Alright, let's make our way back to the base. I think we've earned it today. There is a howitzer there, though, so we could probably gunship that on the way back. MiG-3 is too busy being a bomber zombie to really pay attention to the fact that his team is dead, because that's just normal. Right. Gunner. Thank you, sir. Good job, Ivan. Alright, well, I'm going to make my way back to base. That guy will probably die to the PBM by the time I get back. So, if he does, I'll see you back in the hangar if you don't. And, well, we'll be back to ground banding. See you shortly. Well, you join me back over the battlefield. The MiG-3 did manage to kill the PBM in the end. It took him nearly five minutes to do it, but he did it. Um, so now we are just going to farm because I'm never going to catch a MiG-3. He's currently RTB, so I'm just going to do that, really. The only other thing I've done is I've switched to the 100 kilo bombs just because we're dealing with tanks mostly now. There are still pillboxes and howitzers to destroy, but we're dealing mostly with pillboxes, so I'm just going to go along with that and take the 100s for the better blast radius. So yeah, that's really it from there, and as you can see the tanks are just down there. Nice and easy. Like I said, this this plane isn't like it's not meta, but like it's it's fun in the sense that you can just muck around with it. Really, I've not tried this thing in ground RV yet, but it it feels okay. Like yeah, it's a little bit underpowered and it's not the most forgiving in terms of its flight performance. But for how rare it is, it can be quite fun to play. I only got a one. That's unfortunate. But, that's fine, we've got our guns to take out anything else, so we're all good in that regard. Let me get a bit of altitude with the rather weak engine. It's, it's not the most powerful engine, I will say that. But it's enough, it's not like it's 200 horsepower, which I'm very worried if it, if it had 200 horsepower. Because it already doesn't handle great, it's got about 700, 800-ish. Uh, yeah, I don't want any less power than that, thank you. So I think I'll go for this howitzer and then line up for that pillbox. Unfortunately, with most of the enemy team, well, the entire enemy team being dead and their bots being killed, obviously we killed a couple earlier, but, you know, this is how it is. Yeah, it's not exactly ideal for us to be chasing a MiG-3, and I would be going after bots, but there's none left. Because at least the bots give you an idea of how the guns work on this, but to be fair, if you're familiar with US or Russian aircraft, you should be pretty familiar with this thing's guns. A little bit more reverse, there we go. So this pillbox should get us the win, in that case. We're going to have to line it up between the houses, though, and hopefully we don't hit anyone in the houses. I mean, 
You never know. Stray bullet might go in the loft and then Dave Torres will be woken up, but that's normal. 56 tickets left, and that is pretty much it. I think the, I think I just saw the MiG. Oh, no, the MiG is coming. Okay, let's turn in towards him. The PBM's probably going to get to the base before um, the MiG-3 gets to me. Oh, no, never mind. The match ended before the MiG-3 could get to us. But that, that does obviously show that the tandem mic can do some work. I wouldn't call it, like, you need to get this plane now. But, like, the fact that I never used to have this plane because I missed out on it. I was in college when this plane was released in the Chronicles of... Well, War Thunder Chronicles event. So I never got the chance to have this thing. But, obviously, with the boxes, I managed to get this. And, well, it's fun. It's just not meta, but to be fair, most things that come out of an event aren't. But, you know, it's fun. It's got character. It's very, very unique. We probably won't ever see an aircraft like this again. And, well, if you can get it, I definitely recommend doing so.